To conclude cyanosis, we shall go through the differences between central and peripheral cyanosis. So here you have the mechanism. Uh, the cyanosis is description, the affected parts, uh, application of uh, a warm environment, warmth, uh, giving oxygen, and on the tongue, what happens? Right, so in central cyanosis, the mechanism is imperfect oxygenation of blood in the lung or admixture of venous and arterial blood in the heart. In peripheral cyanosis, this is local vasoconstriction or reduction in arterial blood flow. Looking at the cyanosis in general, central cyanosis is generalized and peripheral is localized. Affected parts. So if you touch the patient, on central cyanosis, this patient will be warm. And on peripheral, this patient will be cold because there is a reduction in that arterial blood flow, right? Here, the blood flow is perfect, but its oxygenation is the issue, right? On application of, of warmth, right? So if you, if you apply warmth on central cyanosis, that cyanosis does not disappear. And in peripheral cyanosis, here it disappears. Why? Because if you warm, there will be vasodilation. We are reversing that, vas that vasoconstriction. And the blood flow will be restored. If you give oxygen, oxygen therapy, right? So in central cyanosis, central cyanosis may actually disappear in pulmonary uh, cases, except in right to left shunt, right? those shunts it doesn't uh, resolve. But in peripheral cyanosis here, the cyanosis will disappear upon giving oxygen. And looking at the tongue, the tongue is always involved in central cyanosis and is never involved in peripheral cyanosis. Remember why we said the tongue is in the oral cavity, is always warm and also it is a good blood supply. That is uh, what you need to remember on the differences between central and peripheral cyanosis. Thank you.